The Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon University was established in 1979 as the first educational institution dedicated to robotics research. Our decade of research has resulted in the development of many manufacturing and assembly robotic systems. By combining databases with computer-aided design systems, programs have been automatically generated for a variety of welding tasks. A forging cell capable of part inspection and measurement has been implemented. Robotic vision systems, artificial intelligence planning programs, and sensor-based manipulator control were combined to provide solutions to the problems of object recognition, acquisition, and assembly. Expert systems have been developed to optimize decision-making in areas of job shop production control, large project management, and long-range financial planning. We have demonstrated the ability to produce single board computer prototypes in 24 hours, and we have applied automatic visual inspection to printed circuit boards and similar complex products. Direct drive manipulator technology was conceived at the Institute and two prototypes were developed. Robotics for Hazardous Environments has produced vehicles which have performed years of inspection and nuclear recovery work at Three Mile Island. The location of underground pipelines has been accomplished through magnetic sensing, and the unearthing of buried objects has been demonstrated by an excavator using robotic machine intelligence. Researchers have constructed several indoor mobile robots to develop technologies which have led to mine exploration and autonomous outdoor navigation. Since 1984, researchers have successfully found and followed paved roads, avoided obstacles, tracked highways, and built navigation maps. The field of robotics has accumulated enough knowledge as a basis which we may call core of robotics technology that should be taught in a very systematic way as the basis. On top of that, what we are emphasizing is to integrate various components into a one system because robotics amounts to actually a system that can perform some task and for that integration is the key. So we have to teach uh, students how to do it. We are the first academic institution that started a research organization, the Robotics Institute, which is dedicated to the research, to the advanced research of robotics. And we feel that it's our responsibility to transfer this knowledge to the outside world and especially to the younger generation. So I think we are the best position, we are in the best position to establish the new PhD program. And having recognized the need, we have established robotics PhD program in, in the fall of 1989. Uh, there's a very positive response from uh, industry. They always say that uh, there is a great need of people who have not only the basic knowledge but also has the experience of uh, putting together, integrating a relatively large robotic system, and we can create those people. Currently, the Robotics Institute is developing new technologies to be used for planetary exploration. To this end, we have configured and are building a six-legged walking robot. A perception system is being built to provide detailed local representations and broad three-dimensional descriptions of rugged terrain, and a general robotic planning and control architecture is being designed that facilitates the execution of a wide variety of tasks. Rapid tool manufacturing is being approached with the integration of stereolithography and thermal spraying into a unified CAD-CAM environment. A system testbed for an injection mold tooling paradigm is being built. To produce quality parts from unique designs, five cooperating expert systems work together to control machine tools that will eventually automate most craftsmen's duties. A structured highlight inspection system for specular objects has been developed. 
Inspection of the 2,000 solder joints on a typical surface mount circuit board takes the system only 18 minutes, compared to 60 to 90 minutes for a human inspector. In the area of computer vision, researchers have developed a new method to analyze a color image and separate glossy and highlight components. We have also extracted three-dimensional depth maps from a sequence of images. The FAST Navigation Project is investigating path tracking and collision avoidance at high speeds for robot vehicles in featureless terrains, such as strip mines and hazardous waste sites. In addition, Observation schedules for the Hubble Space Telescope are being developed. The study of achieving absolutely realistic graphics for manufactured parts is underway. A new concept for robot arm design has been built. Ground penetrating radar is now being used for subsurface mapping. And a test bed capable of mimicking the characteristics of wheeled robots is in use. With sponsorship from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, we are transferring technology to small and moderately sized manufacturing industries to assist them in raising their domestic and international competitiveness. So what happened in the 80s is we found, in spite of knowing exactly what has to be done, we could not implement all the things we wanted to do because the people, the recipients of the technology were not educated or trained to receive and operate the solutions, the high-tech solutions that were developed. And this is why we're now going back and re-examining the premises and saying until we train the workforce so that they're able to intelligently use these solutions, you're not going to make major strides. So once that happens, once we have new undergraduates and graduates coming out of our universities and colleges who understand the technologies of perception and cognition and manipulation and who understand all the existing the solution space, then they'll be able to take that and apply it to specific application areas. And from that point of view, I expect the 1990s and the uh, beginning of the 21st century to be extremely more active in robotics and automation than uh, in the past. Our main aim is to work on problems of great societal impact. And if you look at what they are and where we have a comparative advantage, it appears that there are two areas that where we can make a significant contribution. One of them is the area of technologies for rapid response. This is going to be extremely important for being globally competitive in a rapidly changing environments around the world. The second is technologies for high-risk environment. As we develop autonomous systems that can not only survive in dangerous or unstructured environments, but also can perform missions of importance, the more autonomous they can get, the easier it will be for us to undertake a number of the missions for the future, both in space and harvesting of the oceans and being able to operate in highly radioactive environments and toxic environments. And this is where we'll be concentrating in the 90s.